Hello and welcome to the show. It's April 29th. I'm your host, Stephen White, and here with me today is my new co-host and wife, Katrina White. She's going to be helping take over a few of the other segments. So, let's get straight to it. Front page flicks. Fox has officially announced a sequel to last year's surprise hit, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Fox co-chairman Tom Rothman mentioned the sequel as part of a list of movies Fox plans to start production on by summer's end. Andy Serkis, who portrayed the ape leader Caesar, has already signed on for the sequel. However, there's no word on how this will affect Serkis' duties as second unit director for The Hobbit. In related news, Peter Jackson released 10 minutes of The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, to audiences at CinemaCon. The film has been shot at 48 frames per second, which is double the standard 24 frames per second used with most films. For those who don't know, the frame rate refers to the number of images displayed by a projector within one second. Apparently, the 48 frames per second footage left the audience in shock, commenting that it seemed more like a stage play than an epic blockbuster. Jackson decided to experiment with the frame rate, hoping to capitalize on the growing HD market. However, it is unknown if the negative reaction will spell the end for The Hobbit. Roger Birnbaum, CEO of MGM, spoke to students at the University of Denver about film history and production classes but also mentioned a few upcoming projects. One in particular was the remake of Carrie, starring Chloe Moretz. Birnbaum said that they have decided to do the movie partially made up of found footage. This would include interviews with Carrie's classmates, recalling what happened on that terrifying prom night, serving as a framing device. Kimberly Pierce of Boys Don't Cry fame is directing this remake. Disney recently announced that a sequel to The Muppets will be moving forward. Walter will be returning as the main character, but Jason Segel will not reprise his role as Gary. Along with the Muppets, two new Pixar films were announced, the first being Dia de los Muertos, centering on the Mexican holiday, The Day of the Dead, and The Good Dinosaur. The films will be released in 2013 and 2014, respectively. Here's a look at Johnny Depp as Tonto in the upcoming The Lone Ranger. The look caused a bit of a controversy by conforming neither to traditional style of the Comanche people, which is technically Tonto's tribe, nor the traditional depiction of Tonto himself. Depp states the look was taken from a painting called I Am Crow by an artist named Kirby Sattler. Depp said it seemed you could almost see the separate sections of the individual, very wise, very tortured, very angry, and very understanding, and all these things inspired him. Based on a press release from MovieTickets.com, The Avengers is tracking at one and a half times the pre-sales of Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Thor, and Captain America, The First Avenger combined. This means the film should open between $160 to $200 million or more, shattering numerous box office records. I know I can't wait to see it. In theaters, Friday, May 4th. First up, we have LOL featuring Miley Cyrus and Demi Moore. Death of a Superhero featuring Andy Serkis, and Marvel's The Avengers featuring half of New York City. And now on to this week's new segment, Point of Review. On this week's Point of Review, The Human Centipede 2. Now I have watched the first one and I wasn't very impressed, but the hype around the second one being the goriest movie ever made, being banned in the UK, got my curiosity running. I wanted to see this movie. Well, I watched it after reading articles about it and some of the gross stuff that's in it, putting me damn near into fainting mode. But I did it anyway. I stuck it out. What do I think about it? Well, let's just put it this way. I love a good horror movie. I like it when they're tense. I like it when you're scared. And there were many times where I felt scared. I felt tense. It made you feel uneasy. That's a good horror movie. But the bigger problem with this horror movie is that there was just too much of the gore. Now again, I love gore in horror movies. It's what makes a horror movie a horror movie. But sometimes when you take it too far where it's unwatchable, it takes away from what makes the movie good. And therefore, the intensity was outweighed by the gore because you couldn't stand to watch it. So, in this case, I have to say that I'd only give this movie two stars out of five because it was unbearable to watch half the time. Yes, I was scared. Yes, I was tense. That's where it gets its other star. But the fact that it was hard to watch makes it go down a grade. When I say that watching someone bash someone's teeth in is the least gory thing you're going to see, just imagine that, people. There's worse than that. Eight 
HBO announced on Tuesday that Bill Maher's long-running political talk show, Real Time with Bill Maher, has been renewed for its 11th and 12th seasons. The renewer will keep the show on air until at least 2014. The show is averaging 4.1 million viewers per episode in the current 10th season, a three-year high for the series. The hour-long show, which features Mar hosting roundtable discussions on current events, airs Friday at 10, 9 central on HBO. Bill O'Reilly has re-signed with the Fox News Channel with a multi-year deal that will keep him with the network for a while longer. O'Reilly first signed on with Fox in 1996 with the O'Reilly Report, which was later redubbed the O'Reilly Factor. The O'Reilly Factor, which has been the most watched program in cable news for 125 consecutive months, currently averages 4.5 million views daily. Big Brother, the long-running reality TV staple, will return on the airways Thursday, July 12th at 9 p.m. CBS also unveiled the premiere dates for its new reality offerings, Dogs in the City, and Three. Big Brother will air Wednesday at 8, Thursday at 9, and Sunday at 8, beginning with the Sunday episode on July 15th. The live eviction show will air on Thursday. Dogs in the City, which stars New York City-based dog guru Justin Silver as he resolves issues between pooches and their owners, because everybody needs a new dog whisperer, will premiere Wednesday, May 30th at 8 p.m. The dating show 3, meanwhile, will kick off Sunday, July 22nd with a 90-minute premiere at 9 p.m. The series follows three single women of various ages and backgrounds as they meet for the first time with a common goal, finding true love. Kim Kardashian and her clan of reality TV royalty have re-upped the E in a deal that ensures that Keeping Up with the Kardashians will continue to run for at least another three seasons. God help us. The deal, which covers seasons 7, 8, and 9 for the show, also extends to the network's first look deal with the family for new reality ventures and covers the multi-generational span of Kardashians. Season 7 of Keeping Up with the Kardashians will premiere May 20th. Dexter Morgan is about to face a new baddie as Ray Stevenson will play the head of a Russian crime syndicate in a multi-episode arc on the seventh season of Dexter. Stevenson has starred in TV's Rome and in movies like Thor and the Punisher War Zone, and will also star in Thor 2 and this summer's G.I. Joe Retaliation. Dexter, which has renewed for a 7th and 8th season by Showtime in November, will begin its 7th season on September 30th. NBC said Friday that Ryan Seacrest has officially joined up with Matt Lauer and the rest of the Today Show team, serving as a special correspondent on the morning TV staple. The correspondent job is part of a new multi-platform deal with NBC Universal. The two-year deal will also extend Seacrest's on-air hosting duties for E, as well as his broadcasting and producing duties for NBC, which includes news, entertainment, and sports programming. Seacrest also contributes to NBC's primetime news and NBC's entertainment programming. <laughs>
In addition, Nintendo plans to beef up its digital distribution offerings with downloadable versions of major retail releases launching day and date with one another, at least for its first party titles. This new era will begin in August 2012 with the release of New Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS. This new day and date release digital release strategy will also extend to the Wii U once it launches. China is working on a game console of its own. The console was once known as the E-Box, then the iSec, but now its name is the CT510. Despite the current console market, or lack thereof, Beijing Edu Technology Limited, the CT510 developers, have announced the console will be released in China on April 29, 2012, with a cost of approximately 600 American dollars. The CT510 will launch with eight pre-installed games, and also boasts the title of the second entertainment console to be control-free with connect like features. Currently, the Chinese government has banned all video game consoles, so it's not clear how this console is getting around it. If the laws are changing, it could mean Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo could, in theory, release their consoles there as well. A few tech-savvy fans may have revealed plans for the next Skyrim DLC, thanks to animation files included in the latest patch for the game. Fall names make mention of Bow, a snow elf prince, and Crossbow, both of which would be new to the 2011 RPG. The crossbow is pretty self-explanatory, but the fall names that mention the snow elf prince point to certain elements of the deeper Elder Scrolls lore. Obviously, take this with a grain of salt, but the presence of animation files inside the update suggests that some form of crossbow and snow elf prince is coming to Skyrim in the near future. And now on to Disclosure. New to DVD and Blu-ray on May 1st, Gary Marshall's New Year's Eve, starring Sarah Jessica Parker, Jessica Biel, and Ashton Kutcher. Joyful Noise, starring Queen Latifah and Dolly Parton. W.E., starring Abby Cornish and James D'Arcy. And Steven Soderbergh's Haywire, starring Gia Carano, Ewan McGregor, and Michael Fassbender. And new to Blu-ray, Clueless, Men in Black 2, About a Boy, Definitely Maybe, Jeremiah Johnson, Meet Joe Black, The Mimic Trilogy, Pillow Talk, and Birds of Paradise. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you've been well informed. If you have any suggestions, reviews, comments, or questions, please email us at pencilandpaperproductions at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.